I give you glory for all you've brought me through. And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. I'm moving forward to follow after you. And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. Your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never has been enough yeah. and I'm believing the best is yet to come come on sing to him the cross before me my hope on things above and in you Jesus the best is yet to come your prayer is an open door we want you Lord like never before your presence is an open door so come now Lord like never before come on church your breakthrough is coming, amen. I want you to prophesy these words over your life, amen.
prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way. Sing it, church. Prepare the way. Did you praise? Prepare the way tonight. Prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way. Prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way. Prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way. Let's prophesy. Oh, that. Yes, yes. 
No God like Jehovah. Come on, these people are real. Come on. There's no God like Jehovah. Even those people in the mother's room are busy dancing. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah.
such an expectation in the atmosphere. The Word of God says that we enter His court with praise and thanksgiving. And man, oh man, are we in the courts tonight. <laughs> As we go into worship now, I want you to worship out of a knowing and a revelation that you're already in the courts. The courts is within you. So in this evening, I want you to raise up your hands. I want you to forget about the ban, forget about everything. But remember that Jehovah is God in this evening. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare your living oh in your presence. Oh. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free. My shame is undone in your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the
Lift up your hands. I am here in this holy moment now for a fresh encounter. God, it's beautiful church. And open the river 
and the glory that fell on me. It was the glory that set me free, and the glory, and the glory.
I can 
Say, Holy Spirit, touch my heart. I healed, I surrender to you completely. 
speak as you will do as you will I receive healing I receive miracles I receive your presence Father let your presence saturate this place let your glory rest upon your people let the glory of God rest upon them How many of you feel His presence? Amen. So we're going to minister, we're going to prophesy as the Lord leads. I just want to get into something here. Go with me to 2 Timothy 4, 5. 
2 Timothy 4, 5. We're going to be ministering to many tonight. We have ministered this morning in Krugersdorp. A lot of uh, healings has broken out there. The Spirit of God really just came in there strong. And uh, 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 where there is faith or when people have faith, you know, when people come to church with an unbelief and then they're hoping for a miracle to take place, that's not how it works, really. Um, uh, uh, most people we have prayed for that have received healing or have received miracles came already expectant to, to receive it. We're praying for a lady this morning, um, a lot of problems and couldn't walk and so on. And uh, before I could even say stand up or so, the lady stood up and began to, this is one of them, there was quite a few. And, uh, 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 you know, there is, and then you have people that can sit and they, they doubt and they wonder whether they can get healed or not. So one rule when it comes to healing is we don't really pray for those where they actually don't believe in them at all or they question completely whether God can heal them. Um, there's a realm of faith that you can push in and, and God can do something differently. Uh, but the power of God moves on expectation, hunger and faith. Same with me, faith. Faith is something that must be seen by God. I'm going to say it again. Faith is something that must be seen. And as it must be seen, it is like people can see if someone has faith. God can see if someone has faith. It's not a matter of the heart. It is an expression, an outward expression of faith. Faith manifests itself outside. Are you guys with me? When Abraham was about to kill his son Isaac, the Bible says, that the angel of the Lord says, now I see that you fear God. Meaning before that he couldn't see that he feared God. Are you guys with me? God had to see an action. God had to see faith. The Bible says, Paul, can, Paul said, I see faith upon you. So sometimes we can get lukewarm to the presence of God. And unbelief, unbelief, listen to me, unbelief will kill many areas in a person's life. You can only make a journey when there is faith and you keep faith. Whether it is in your business, whether it is in your, uh, in your ministry. But you have to continually move by faith. I want to speak about four phases of ministry tonight. While we get into prophecy and I'll see how the Spirit of the Lord leads. There's a man sitting here with a blue shirt. I have a word for you. And I... I are you guys all together or is it uh, just the two of you that's together all together family friends friends and family okay because when i stood i saw the holy spirit very strong by you i saw the angel of the lord standing by you and there's a need that needs to be answered that god is going to speak to you Go with me to where we were, 2 Timothy. Read this for me. Say, but you be watchful. But read this for me. So stop there. Say with me, fulfill your ministry. There's a place where God wants everyone to come to fulfilling their ministry. Are you guys with me? You can seek a gift, receive a gift. Each one sitting here, God has ordained for you either to have a gift or you have a gift. Now listen, you can seek a gift. You can receive a gift. Then you can have a gift. Then you can move in the gift. But then you can become the gift. A lot of people don't become the gift. In fact, very few become a gift. Some have a gift, even less move in a gift. Others become a gift. A gift is when, when you become a gift, you are full grown 
in ministry and what God has for you. Each one has a ministry. But you can only fulfill your ministry if a gift is sharpened and matured. Are you guys with me? If your gift of healing, you pray for how many people? If your gift is administration, you go full in administration. If your gift is leadership, you go full into that. If your gift is miracles, you go full into that. If the gift of prophecy, you do it until you become prophecy wherever you go. And only when you get to that place is the fulfillment of, prof, of, of ministry. Meaning that when I stand in front of the Lord one day, He will look and say, well done, good and faithful servant. Or there will be no rewards given. But as I stand in front of Him, and if He says, well done, good and faithful servant, and if He hands out rewards, it is on the basis that I made or they fulfilled the ministry that is given me. Are you guys with me? The word fulfilled, this, let's also go to, before we go to another verse, the word fulfilled is, put on this, on, on, the verse again on the screen. Fulfill your ministry. So if you fulfill, in fact, put in the King James, I don't like this, this, this translation, put in the King James. I'm going to read it again. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof, full proof of your ministry. The word full proof means to bring full measure, to give in fully, to carry out fully, to discharge completely, simply completely, to pass a test to be fully established as a matter of certainty to be fully convinced say with me convinced to be fully assured that means that when somebody watches your ministry or when somebody watches the gift they are fully convinced that you are a gift from the Lord are you guys with me it means to be fully assured to give full proof it means, to, it means to bear or bring full, to make full, to cause a thing to be shown to the full, to fulfill your ministry, to carry it to the end and to accomplish it. Things that have been accomplished, to do it by conviction and inclination. And this is very powerful because a lot of people think that ministry happens or that a gift comes when there is some supernatural encounter. And they don't know how to start off the call of God. The call of God starts with an inclination. It is just a desire in the heart. And the moment you move in that inclination, in the desire, you begin to move again in another inclination until you find the will of God. But he is looking at a heart and he's going to see, listen, who's making the right decision? Because there is a call. Say, I am called. Everyone sitting here is called. Just only some will enter it, some not. Many are called. Few are chosen. Trust me. There are times, there are tests, there are delays. There are seasons. In Jesus' ministry, there was four seasons, four phases for him to have gone through, to make his ministry foolproof, to make, to fulfill the ministry that the Lord has given him. Meaning, what is the ministry that the Lord has given you? Are you in a place where you can fulfill it? Are you stepping out in faith to fulfill the ministry, to exercise the gift that he has given you? Because you're not going to give an account on your business one day. You're not going to give an account on a, on a decision that you have made. We're going to give an account on whether we have done what He has called us. That's it. Are you guys with me? Say with me, make foolproof of my ministry. Say to become the gift. Now I'll preach later on, on, on that. But there's a realm where you can become a gift of God. Many seek the gift. That's those who 
were just introduced in ministry. The only problem is people are 20 years and they are still seeking a gift. They don't know what the Lord has given them. They haven't received it. They haven't had it. They haven't moved in it. And they haven't become it. They are questioning. They are doubting. They are still wondering whether they are called or whether they are not called. There's one way you find out these things. Say with me, seek His face. There's no other way. It is to be planted in a house, in a church that moves in the supernatural to whom God can speak to. I was we were busy this week with the situation that uh, uh, with certain ministries and um, where I was explaining that you can have an Ishmael ministry or an Isaac ministry. An Ishmael ministry, even an Ishmael business, is something that is birthed from yourself, trying to make the will of God come to pass. But it is not God. And Isaac cannot come into fruition unless Ishmael is kicked out. The Bible says, kick out that bondwoman and her son, Hagar and Ishmael. Speaking of the law, but let's put it in relation to the calling of God. Meaning, kick out the thing that you try to do, Abraham, on your own, to bring to fulfillment God's will and God's promise. So if this ministry was an Ishmael ministry, we are going seven years only. Uh, we are busy with a big project that will be soon. It had to be revealed at the at the conference, but uh, we are just waiting for one or two contracts uh, to be in place. And uh, then we'll be revealing it, possibly before the next conference or on the next one. We'll see what is the best. Uh, but we can only wait. We have to wait for a certain contract to come into place. And uh, obviously, a lot of things are purchased and things are done and everything is done. Everything is done. It is just waiting. It is just a time thing. It is not a... And we can't reveal it unless that thing is in place because the moment churches do that, uh, there's a lot of objections. And when there's a lot of objections, then they can be uh, delayed for a year or two. So we don't want to have that. We want to have uh, full assurance the moment we reveal it. But in seven years, we have done this. We are busy with this big project. Then, um, then you know, we have planted Krugersdorp, um, Cape Town, uh, Centurion, of course, Belito. Uh, within seven years and what people can't understand is that the moment we send somebody is that they carry weight when we got to Belito we casted our devils we healed the sick why where I when I cast out devils by the finger of God you will know that the kingdom of God has come upon you so whenever you go into a region and when the kingdom arrives in a region, you see another church can go plant. And as they go plant, they can be nice to everyone. But when Jesus comes in with his kingdom, he sets free. He brings healing. Trust me, he brings deliverance. Because where the kingdom is, where the kingdom of light is, kingdom of darkness has to be kicked out. It has to be dispelled. And as the kingdom of darkness is dispelled, the kingdom of light takes occupation. Joshua was commanded, go into the promised land and dispel the enemy from the promised land in order for you to possess it. But remove the enemy that is there. Are you guys with me? When Saul was commanded to strike and kill the Amalekites. He was told, don't let one be left behind. Kill every single one. Meaning the moment, the, 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 the way you get into a region is to bring the authority and the power of the kingdom of God. But people are still seeking a gift and they are not becoming a gift. They haven't gone through the phases of ministry. They haven't submitted to the phases of ministry. 
that I'm going to get into right now. There are phases. The moment you give your life to the Lord, the moment you give your life to Jesus Christ and you say yes to the call of God, there's phases that begins and people get stuck at a phase and they delayed. 10 years, 15 years, they are delayed. We've had people that left us in the beginning and then they will come back 15 years later, many of them. And then they realize, my God, what have I missed? I just met someone, uh, one person just recently. They left us a few years ago, made a bad mistake. And now they're stuck in that bad mistake. And now they're realizing what they have missed simply because of not passing a test. You see, being a, around a prophet is different to being around a pastor or an apostle. When we, I was saying to somebody, when we send, trust me, we send and we hear God. When we send somebody, we hear God. Are you guys with me? We hear God. But I can only fully hear God or speak in someone's life fully to the degree that they submit to the gift. Outside of that, because God only works with those who are given to you. And what happens is we get familiar with the gift many times. I'm not saying people are familiar here, but there is a familiarity in the hometown always. And familiarity forbids the Holy Ghost to move. Formality, familiarity, we get to so many churches and you see familiarity all over. The pastor can't move in the gifts. The people can't receive the gifts because they become familiar. So that is how the enemy comes in and he destroys the whole thing. Why do we continually push it? Because the moment we don't move forward, you go backwards. So people might say, okay, but you know, it looks like we're not growing because we're in this church. Well, you know, I said this morning in Krugersdorp, both Centurion and Krugersdorp is more than 100% in capacity, the church. By st st church statistics, you can only be 70% then you have to go bigger. If you don't, you stagnate. Both our buildings are over 100% capacity. And because we are over 100, and this is just an evening service, this is not even speaking of the morning service. I mean, tonight is just an evening service. The morning is almost double, over 100% capacity. But when you are around a prophet or a prophetic gift, you begin to be aligned into the timing of God. As long as you can understand what a prophet is and what the prophetic is. So what I realized is a lot of people have come in, a lot of visitors have come in, they don't understand the prophetic. They don't understand how to relate to a prophet or how to accept that gift so that the gift can move. So we will do something on it and we'll be ministering on the gift, how to fulfill your ministry. If you haven't signed up for the Bible school course, module six, you don't have to do module one to five to sign up for module six. Am I right? How to fulfill your ministry is module six. And uh, I'll be doing it. It is going to be very good. You want to sign up for that. Don't be a spectator, be a participator. Uh, you know, when I knew, the moment I knew and just sensed there is a call on my life was the moment I gave my all. It was a sensing, it was not an encounter. The encounters came later. The visitations and the angelic visitations came later. The moment I sensed was the moment that I pressed in and I gave it all. Are you guys with me? So I think there's one day left to register, one or two days. We're starting with Tuesday night. So um, it is going to be an awesome course. And uh, I think it's eight sessions, eh? Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday. Um, Tuesday, Thursday. So it'll be, it'll be four weeks. So um, it is going to be amazing. But uh, 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 And tonight is kind of like how to fulfill your ministry. I was supposed to minister on it this morning. But then we're going to prophesy, then we're going to minister to you tonight. And, um, and as I'm walking and looking, I'm just sensing and feeling the Lord as to what He wills to do. You know, 
again, when we're in a church that moves in the supernatural, we become very familiar. And uh, it's like just, ah, oh, okay, what is the next show? What is the next performance? And uh, then you get into another church that has nothing of it. And they are hungry and desperate because they have never seen it. They don't even know what it is to move in the Spirit. They've never seen anyone move in the Spirit. They've never seen a healing, never seen a deliverance, nothing like that. And if it happens, it is some supernatural sovereign move of God that is just touching one person. So we are entering in a time where the supernatural is neglected. I have pastors that are telling me that they don't even believe in the, and I'm speaking of mega, mega, mega church pastors. They are telling me they don't believe in the supernatural and that God is not supernatural. Only the devil is supernatural. That's the exact words, quote, unquote. Now, there's a realm of blaspheming the Holy Ghost. No wonder God is not there. No wonder God is not moving. Yeah, but we have souls. That, that's fine. Is the presence there? Is the glory there? Is the conviction of the Holy Ghost there? Is the power of God in the place to deliver and to set free? Is the power of God in a place to heal? And if you come with a need that that need is met or you are at least equipped to deal with that need completely. The anointing is like a knife and like an axe that it will come into your spirit, into your heart and it will strike and deal with something if a person is open. Are you guys with me? So let's go to Colossians 4 verse 17. Colossians 4 verse 17. Put in the King James. And say to Archippus, take heed to the ministry. Say with me, take heed to the ministry. Which you have received in the Lord, that you fulfill it. He said, I want you to take heed completely. Be diligent to the ministry that you have been given so that you may fulfill it. Are you guys with me? So that you may fulfill it. The word fulfill is the similar to full proof, not exactly the same, but it means to make full, to fill up. It, it means to furnish and to flourish and to supply liberally, to abound, to render full and to complete what the Lord has given you. It means to multiply in numbers. Say with me, a num numbers. Meaning that if the Lord has given you a ministry, it has to multiply in numbers. It has to. If He has made you an e-group leader, if you have seek the gifts, receive the gifts, have the gifts, moving in the gifts, you will eventually become the gift. Don't worry about it. But there will come a fruitfulness and a multiplication that will take place. But there has to be a connection. You see, we were dealing with Kruger's Dorp with something this morning and we're going to deal with it this week. Because there were some leaders that were not connecting the people to me. So the Lord said to me clearly, He said, make a leadership shift immediately. And uh, because they were not connected to me, you see, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Only if you abide in me, will you be fruitful. Only if you abide in me. When he takes apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, and he takes the church, it is extension gifts of Christ. If it's parts of Christ, we are the body of Christ. Are you guys with me? So, unless there is a connection, if there is a disconnect from people to me, there cannot be fruitfulness. 
if there is a connection, there can be fruitfulness. I'm not saying at all I am Jesus, not at all. I'm using a principle to be planted as a tree by the rivers. And the thing is, a pastor can feel if there is a disconnect, then it doesn't matter what people do, there will be no fruitfulness. They can work, they can toil, there's no fruitfulness. But if there is a connection in the heart, you see, what does the enemy do? He brings offense. The moment he brings offense, he brings a disconnect. And he brings offense and people take the bait. Whether you are in this church or in another church watching. But people take the bait. The moment they take the bait, they become blinded. And they don't know they've taken the bait. It takes somebody else to open their eyes and to remove them from the pit. The moment you are entrapped, you cannot save yourself. Are you, are you guys with me? Do you know how many ministers in this nation are trapped? I'm not going to speak, it's live stream. Trapped. You need somebody else to take and lift you up and pick you out. If people have taken offense, they need somebody that can break through that thing and say you have taken offense. Let's deal with it. Let's lift you out of the trap. Because that trap will delay a person for many years. They will open their eyes in 20 years time and they'll realize they have just lost 20 years of their life. They are exactly at the same place. Some will never even know because they are just blind. Do you know how it looks like in the spirit to look at somebody that is blind? Are you guys with me? Can we open some eyes or uh, are you just... Uh, because people look at us. You know how it is for a prophet to look at somebody and see they are blind and then nothing is going to happen to them. Ten years later, they are still blind. In the spirit, I'm saying. This is spirit realm. Unless I can discern and see into the spirit realm, you cannot move on. The first son that Israel had, was it Israel? Yes, the first son that Israel had was Simeon. Am I right? Not a Simeon? No, eh? Sorry? Reuben, second one, Simeon. Our pastors are useless. They go. What are you talking about? You don't know. Israel had 12 sons, 12 nations. Reuben, Simeon. It's either Simeon or Reuben. Reuben means to hear. Just check for me. Or let me, let me, let me get it. I want to show you something. Hey? Genesis 30, verse 14. I don't know. So Reuben means, say with me, to see. Simeon, which is the second son, means to hear. Then you have Judah, or no, Levi. Levi, fourth Judah. So, the first son of Israel was Reuben. Reuben means, say with me, to see. The first thing that happens when you are birthed spiritually correctly, you have the ability to see. The problem is people are not birthed correctly. Are you guys with me? They are not birthed correctly. 
They are not been allowing themselves to be begotten. So they are unable to see traps or offenses that comes in. The second son that is born. So there are four sons, four phases. The second son that is born is Simeon. Simeon means to hear. That your spiritual ears be opened. To have the ability to hear God. Or to hear the Father's voice that is in the house. Are you guys with me? How does God's voice sound? He sounds like the one that you submit yourself to. That you follow yourself. That you follow. When Samuel awakened at night as a five-year-old boy, the Lord called to him and said, Samuel, Samuel. And he woke up and he ran to Eli. And he said, my father, have you called me? And he said, no, I haven't called you. Go back to your bed. And he heard it again. Samuel, Samuel. And he went to his father. Because God's voice will sound like your spiritual father's voice. When you have a dream where God speaks to you in a dream, you will see the father that God has assigned upon you or the prophet that is in the house. Very rarely people will dream about a pastor and they will be in a dream and give direction. God uses the spirit of a prophet. And by the way, in New Testament, only apostles and prophets are fathers, spiritual fathers. In the Old Testament, only prophets were spiritual fathers. Only prophets. In the New Testament, only prophets and apostles are spiritual fathers. You don't see it on pastors. You don't see it on teachers. They don't have the ability to give birth after their kind. They don't have the capacity to give birth to someone in a spiritual capacity. So the second son is Simeon, which means to hear. The third son is Levi. Say with you, Levi which is intimacy. To a Levi is the priest that goes in on behalf of the people into the Holy of Holies. The priest that ministers unto God on behalf of the people and ministers to the people on behalf of God. The Levi, it is intimacy with him. So the moment sight is birthed, hearing is birthed, then only can I enter into a realm with intimacy with God. Once I enter into intimacy, say with you, Judah, there is a praise and a joy that can come out of you. Why are Christians depressed? Because they haven't gone through the phases of ministry. Are you guys with me? Many Christians are unsaved. They are Christian by name only, but they've never had an encounter with God. God has never touched their hearts. Or they are so full of bondage, they are still stuck in Egypt. They have been brought out in a little sense, but it's like they are still stuck there. It's like Israel is saying, the nation of Israel said, uh, the, uh, said take us back to Egypt. Where there was at least leeks and onions. Though we were in bondage and in slavery, we had food to eat. Many Christians desire to go back. And bondage takes them over like this. So Judah, praise and joy can only come once eyes are opened, once ears are opened, once there is intimacy with the Lord. Are you guys with the same with the phases of ministry? So Jesus had phases of ministry. There are four seasons in the year. Four is the number of creation. Your ministry cannot be created outside of these four phases north south east west matthew mark luke john left right front back it is the signs of creation four four seasons winter summer spring autumn the four seasons of a year everything goes around the cycles of four the four faces of the angel in the book of revelation What else is for? Reuben, Simeon, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah. Are you guys with me?
So there are four phases when we look at Jesus' life. Before we get to Him, there is, go with me to, go with me, Acts 17 verse 28. Acts 17 verse 28. For in Him, say with me, in Him, we live and move. Say with me, move. In Him, the moment a believer is stagnant and they stop moving, they have stopped growing in ministry. When we are in Him, we are obligated to move with Him. He is here to make your life and to pick up your life and to move ahead. So with Him move. Where there's revelation, there's always movement. Where there's religion, there's stagnancy. So it says, for in Him we live and move and have our being. Meaning, first of all, we find ourselves in Christ. Once we are in Him, we begin to move with Him. If He moves fast, we move fast. And then we have our being. Say with me, our being. Then we become and we know that we are established. When you are in Christ. I hope Centurion as our hometown is not getting stagnant. Because you look and sound stagnant all over. You see, look at that. It sounds like that. But let the religion come in and make you stagnant and unable to move. How did Leon, but you know, uh, Leon is special that he's got this, or this one is special. No, no, no. We chose to move. We chose to hear by faith. You choose not to move. Many choose not to move. They are scared. They have fear upon them. And they choose not to move with God. When the cloud moves, you move. When the cloud stands still, you stand still. So how has unbelief entered in? People stopped moving with Him. Are you guys with me? So say with me, in Him, we live and move and have our being. You can only move in ministry if you are in Him. If you're in Him, you must move. Those who don't move question whether they are in Him. They have repositioned, they are out of alignment with God. You need a prophetic and apostolic ministry to shift you back into alignment with Him. Other gifts won't do it for you. A teaching gift won't do it. A pastoral gift won't do it. Cannot. Don't have the grace. An evangelist cannot do it. Don't have the grace. That is why the church cannot flourish without the prophetic and the apostolic. They have, what do we find? We find Brian Houston in a scandal. We find T.D. Jakes in a scandal. I'm not saying they are bad people, I'm just giving you the truth. We find this one, Mike Bickle from IHOP in a scandal. Why? No presence. Moved away from the glory and the power to a place of fame and popularity only. I'm not saying popularity is bad. Only. And the presence, you see, the Bible says the presence of the Lord departed from Samson. And he knew it not. Presence of the Lord can so quickly depart from a person. You don't know it. God comes in with a bang and he leaves silently. The devil comes in silently and he leaves with a noise. That is why when he leaves, he screams out of a person. But how does he come in? Silently. God comes in with a bang. Acts chapter number 2. The winds of the Holy Ghost. Tongues as of fire sat upon each of them. As in the day of Pentecost. A sound came into the place. It is coming in with a noise. But he leaves silently. Before a person knows it, the presence has departed. I'm not speaking of Jesus in Jesus is in your heart, don't worry. 
I'm speaking about the manifest presence. The one where it says, for in Him we live. In Him we move. In Him we have our being. In Him. When you're in Him, a lot of people have Jesus in them. But they are not in Him. So they become stagnant. And they don't move where the cloud is moving. Because why? It takes risk to move in faith. Are you guys with me? To move in faith is not easy because people want comfort. They want to have air conditioners, comfortable chairs. They want comfort. Uh, don't put me in serving here. Don't put me in serving there, you know. I want comfort. God isn't into your comfort. If He wasn't into your comfort, the Israelites would have never been in the wilderness. There are phases. They had to come out of Egypt. Then they went into the wilderness. After the wilderness, they went through another season. And then we see them going uh, through the river. Uh, uh, and then we see them entering into Canaan. And as they entered into Canaan, it was, it was phases that they went through. So go over to Psalm 1 verse 1. Is it okay if I teach this for you tonight? Psalm 1 verse 1. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seats of scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that, say with me, that brings forth fruit in his season. His love shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. But he says, he brings forth fruit in his season. You need to understand there are phases and there are seasons. Not every season is fruitful. There's one season that is fruitful in a person's life. But they have to go through the other seasons to get to the season that is fruitful abundantly. Are you guys with me? Go Hosea 6 verse 3. Hosea 6 verse 3. Then we shall know if we follow on to know the Lord. So the, if we follow on. Say if we push on to know the Lord. People are stagnant. They love to just, to not press in and push on to know the Lord. But I come to prayer meetings and this, and then we see the prayer meetings drop, and we have a good, an okay attendance with prayer meetings. But what is happening? People pray maybe for six months. Oh, maybe God is not there. There's a Adamic nature about a person. The Adamic nature wants to put responsibility or not take responsibility but blame and says this one made me do it that one made me do it i don't want to take responsibility for my life what if god calls you to pray and press through for 10 years until the season shifts unless the season shifts you see a lot of people have seasons shift upon their lives but they haven't been prepared there's been no preparation and what a sad day when you have not been prepared and a season of promotion comes and you have not been prepared. A singer that has finally been given a big stage but they were not prepared. So it says if we press on, if we follow on, say with me follow on, it means to pursue, it means to chase after, to follow after, to be behind somebody. It is the Hebrew word radaf, which means to come in behind the press. When Jesus was walking and the train of His robe was behind Him. And the Bible says that the lady with the issue of blood came in behind Him and pressed in behind Him that if she may touch the hem of His garment, 
that she may be healed. But what happened? She came in behind him. So if he pressed in, there's a lot of people that are not pressing in to the presence, following after him to know the Lord more intimately or to know him more passionately. They have given up and they've let go. Are you guys with me? It means to follow after. It means to pursue, to pursue, to chase after. I'm just going through the meanings here. This is not a message I've really prepared. To run after, say with you, to run after. To chase after. When Elijah threw the mantle on Elisha, the Bible says Elisha ran after Elijah. You know, what happens with the anointing is, and I'm speaking to our team because, uh, I mean, the, the last few weeks and will still, that people have to be very, even the leadership have to be very careful to become dead wood. Once were excited, but it has weaned down. Once ran after. The thing is God replaces that office like this and he gets somebody else very quickly. As the anointing chose you, the anointing can choose somebody else. Trust me in that thing. But what has happened? We have laid our hearts down where we no longer want to chase after the anointing. I had ministers saying to me, young pastors saying to me, or my associates or friends or whatever, many years say to me, why do you, you know, if Benny Hinn is here, why are you just driving all over South Africa to be in his services and then this minister is here why are you driving so far to, you know you have an identity issue you have an insecure no 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 you have a hunger issue a lack of hunger issue where are you now oh you're in adultery now oh your ministry doesn't have an anointing oh I pursued and I chased after it if you chase after the anointing Listen, you catch the thing that you chase after. The only thing is people chase things that is, that is, adds nothing. It's a little bit for many people chase after money. You chase after the kingdom, money will come. Blessings will come. Seek first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. What is say with the all these things? That means everything that your heart desire will be given to you. If what? You chase after the kingdom. Seek the kingdom. Seek the anointing. Chase the anointing. Are you guys with me? So if we follow on to know the Lord, His going forth is prepared as the morning. He's going forth, which means His movement in your life is prepared. What? If you follow Him. Meaning His manifestation in your life will surely come as the morning will come. No one goes to bed not thinking the morning is not going to come. As sure as that morning comes, He says, his going forth in your life will appear. And He shall come unto us. Say, come unto us. He shall appear to you. He shall visit you. He shall come to you and call you. As the rain. As the latter and the former rain unto the earth. Meaning as the former rain and the latter rain comes, so shall the Lord visit you. Meaning how does the Lord visit you? How the rains fall. There are four phases to a ministry. Let me get into the rains. I'll get into Jesus' ministry right now. The first phase is usually the former rain that comes. When the former rain comes, it is a calling to ministry. It is where the Lord comes to you, you're already saved, but it's when the Lord comes to you. And there's an inclination or His Spirit comes on you and He brings you a bit out of obscurity 
and the anointing is on you and you now begin to see that He has called you. It is the former rain. Are you guys with me? Then once you're in that former rain, He usually after that takes you into the second phase, which is a hidden phase. It is a phase where you are expected to grow quietly, meaning you have received the call. You know I am called to ministry. People are waiting for a supernatural, I don't know what, an angel to appear to them. An angel doesn't appear to everyone. 98% of the time, a call of God comes by an inclination. It is just that preachers have made it seem impossible. Trust me, every single one of them were called by an inclination. Not by an angel visiting them, not even me. It started with an inclination, a desire. Once that inclination, I respond to that inclination, then encounters begin to come. Are you guys with me? Then the Lord comes and as the call gets more serious, the assignments get more serious, then an angel would come or the Lord Jesus would visit me and would say this assignment or do this or do that. The assignment gets more urgent. But it starts with an inclination and it starts with a desire. There's an inclination that the Lord has put upon you. It has happened or it will happen. But you'll have just have that inkling to say, man, I know I'm called. That is what he is looking for. And he is saying, now I can begin to work with this person because now they respond to that by faith. Are you with me? So, let's... Uh, so, where were we? The first, say with me, the hidden face. The hidden face is where you are expected to quietly and humbly grow. It is where you are being taught, where you're being trained. Nobody sees you. This can be 10 years, 20 years, 3 years, 4 years. Depending on a person's responsibility they take and the quicker they catch it. Some can take 15 years, they just don't catch it. Some can be quick because they catch it. And the hand of the Lord comes on them. When the hand of the Lord comes on them, they are moved quickly. God can immediately and instantly change everything. Do you know, we are worried about a house here, worried about payments here, worried about... God can instantly, in one second, He can change those things around. Don't think He is not supernatural. One phone call can come in to your business. One call. He can visit one person in a dream. His hand can come upon your life. But what is He waiting for? He's waiting for a response to the inkling, to the inclination, to the desire, to a call that is there. And then for somebody to go through the phases of ministry, to respond accurately to the callings and the movements of the Spirit, to respond accurately to the callings of God, to be birthed. I have seen people that are not birthed accurately. You don't want to be in that place. Ministry becomes a nightmare. A blessing becomes a curse. And God is saying, I'll take you and put you back into the incubator. That I can birth you correctly. But the church needs to understand, especially in this community in Centurion, because I see the, the, the commonality amongst the churches in the region. They become very comfortable. And it cannot be so in encounter. I look, I see the one down the road. I'm not mentioning names because then I get into trouble and they all phone. phone they get insecure. Okay. And, and, and I always say it's nothing personal. They should just relax. It's nothing personal. Then they get all insecure. And uh, they all, uh, so I can't mention them. names, but the ones down the roads and the ones up the roads. And, and the people get, get comfortable where the kingdom is looking for vessels that are usable. Vessels that are yielded. That are saying it doesn't matter what I take because the only way that God is going to come into a community, listen to me, don't wait for an open heaven. You are an open heaven. No way does the Bible say 
In fact, there's one verse people take out of context and we have preached it as preachers out of context and thinking we need to open the atmosphere. No, 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 you need to open our people. There's an atmosphere that you carry. When we say there's a closed heaven it is a pla in a place, it is because people are closed. When there's an open heaven in a place, it is because people are open. So what, does, what is required? There's an anointing that is required to open up what is inside of you. To open up a heaven or an atmosphere that is in you. Are you guys with me? Go Ezekiel 1 verse 1. I don't want to be too long tonight, but let's just go as the Holy Spirit leads. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Shebar, as I was among the captives by the river of Shebar, that the heavens, similarly the heavens, opened, and I saw visions of God. Meaning that the heavens were open, and where the heavens were opened, I had the ability to see. Say so with me, see. So an open heaven brings sight. An open heaven immediately brings visions, brings dreams instantly. So then we see Jesus being baptized by John. And as he is baptized by John, the Bible says, a, the heavens opened and a voice came out of heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Then we move to Matthew 17, where the Bible says the same voice came again when they were on the mountaintop. But this time it doesn't say the heavens opened. Because the heavens were opened once and it stayed open. Meaning the atmospheric heavens stayed open. Where there used to be a veil, the veil is torn. The blood gave you access. I don't know if you hear what I'm saying where you could no longer enter into the Holy of Holies, you can now enter into. We have a high priest that has entered for us and has made a way for us. And the blood has drawn us near, meaning what used to be brass heavens is open heavens. And the heavens has been rent open and it has never shut. But what happens is people carry a closed heaven in them. Go Malachi 3 verse 10. 3 verse 8 actually. People carry a closed heaven. How does a heaven open and close in them? Put in the King, oh, it's in the King James. Read this for me, church. Say, will a man rob God? Robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. Next verse. You are cursed with a curse. We know you are not cursed anymore. For you have robbed me. Even this whole nation. Next verse. So wait, before you go there, say with me tithes and offerings. Next verse. Verse 10. Read, it, read this. Bring you. So what does he say? Tithes. Into the storehouse. Carry on. That's there. If I will not open you, hold on. If I will not open you, not open for you. If I will not open you, the windows of heaven and pour you. So with it, pour me out a blessing. He's not going to give you a blessing. He makes you the blessing and he pours you out to people that there shall not be room enough to receive it but how does an open heaven come how do I open the heaven in me so with the tithes and offerings it is by giving to the Lord so people stop giving guess what the heaven shuts in them they are unable to receive they are unable to give out the river can no longer flow Jesus is out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. The only thing is we have shut this temple because we have stopped giving to the Lord. 
So the I am an open heaven. I will be poured out rivers of living water. Why are some able, unable to respond? Just put it as dead. Have your seats. And it all starts whether you hate me now or love me. It all starts with a checkbook. Jesus, Jesus said, where your treasure is, that is where your heart is. So the moment I stop giving to the Lord is the moment I stagnate. Think of where backsliding has come in when you have gone far away from the Lord. It is when giving stops. Are you guys with me? And we're like, ah, the church just wants money, 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 money. Well, you want to sit in a comfortable church. This is almost 300,000 rand rent just here. This small, stupid place. The next project is probably close to 100 million. That has to be done shortly. It costs money to actually preach the gospel. The gospel is free. Trust me. Freely receive, freely give, yes. But it costs money to do it. It costs money to take the community. We still have people with the audacity that says, that says that, you know, how dare pastors take up, probably, they're probably commenting right now, how do, your pastor should are not allowed to receive anything.
So Jesus took note of exactly every cent, everything that each one has given. So money is the way that God sees faith. Money is the way that God sees where your heart is. He looks at our finances. He looks at our money. Where our heart is, that's where our treasure is. God is very connected to money to such a degree that He said, you can either serve me or mammon. But you cannot serve our boss both. Trust me, when mammon comes in, what is mammon? Mammon doesn't mean a lot of money. Mammon just means that money's voice is louder than God's voice. That's all. Mammon means that I'm making decisions on the basis of that, no longer God. Are you guys with me? Mammon means it has replaced God's voice in my life. Because money speaks. God speaks. The Bible says, uh, 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 uh. it says that money answers all things. Say with me, answers. That means money speaks. The problem is people listen to money. And the moment they listen to money, they make the decisions on it. They no longer make the decisions on God. So they make the decisions on whether they have money or not. Or whether they will have money or not. Not on what God has said and what God is saying. When I move away from it, mammon has become my God. Is this is probably too much to, 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 to get into. Are you with me? Yes. Let's go. Where, where, where are we? Uh, I'm going to jump this for the sake of time. Go with me to, um, go with me to Matthew 2 verse 1. Matthew 2 verse 1. I'm going to close with this so that I can minister to you and pray for you. So Jesus had four phases in his life. Four locations he went to. Four locations he went to. The first one, say with him, Bethlehem. Let me see. I we just we're not going to take your time, don't worry. I just want to prophesy over a few people. Um, and uh, 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 in the next few months coming, I will be giving much more of my time also by Centurion so that we can build and focus because Centurion, I believe just, it feels to me like Centurion has just been giving out and we have planted Krugersdorp, then we planted Cape Town, then we planted Durban and uh, they are established right now, but we need to focus on, 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 on the headquarters here because this is where, uh, uh, yeah, this is where, where we need people to be trained up. So Matthew 20, 2 verse 1 is now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Say with me, born in Bethlehem. The first phase of Jesus' ministry was that he was birthed in Bethlehem. So the first phase of your ministry, the moment you say yes to the call of God, is where you are born and being begotten. And a lot of people don't get or submit to the first phase. They don't allow themselves to be birthed. <clears throat> Paul says, I have begotten you in the Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of church members are not sons. They are members only. Because they choose not to be begotten. And they run away after every test. Or they run away after every tough trial or test. Because they are not allowing themselves to be begotten. Are you guys with me? Ministers that are failures or his ministries are not making, is because they're not allowing themselves to be begotten. 
Seventh thing, to be birthed. So the first phase of your ministry, you have to be in a place planted like a tree by the rivers, bringing forth fruit in your season, and that your leaves shall not wither, but shall flourish and begin to be healing to the nations. But it requires somebody to be birthed, to be born and to be begotten from a place called Bethlehem. So Jesus' first phase was Bethlehem. The first phase of your ministry is there must be a trace back or a tracking back. A, if we look at you, you must be traced back to where you have been birthed. Who is your father? Are you guys with me? The devil is not afraid of you. He's afraid of what backs you, who has sent you. The apostolic is a sent anointing. It is sent ones that cast out devils. It is Samson that took the tails of two foxes, tied them together, set them alight, and send them into a city to burn a city down. Where Jesus said, I send you out two by two. I give you the fire of the Holy Ghost to go into a city and to set the city alight. There's a strategy when it comes to ministry. So say with me, Bethlehem. The first phase of your ministry is Bethlehem. The second phase we see Jesus moving and going to a place called Nazareth. Nazareth is a place of spiritual development. It is a place of hiding. We never hear Jesus do any miracle in Nazareth. Are you guys with me? In Nazareth, He was known as the carpenter's little boy, Joseph's little boy. Who is this guy? He's not and no miracles was done in Nazareth. It is his hometown. But it was the season of hiding. This is where people don't understand. They see that they are, some are birthed, but they don't allow themselves to be in a season of hiding. The season of hiding is the secret place. It's the incubator. It is the womb. It is the place where, where, where God develops you. It is the place where He trains you. So go Luke 2 verse 46. Luke 2 verse 46. Zaroska e redenoske e lebena ma sochike skete. Vraske de na mam baradoje kete te na mam. So I can tell you why people lose the fire. Why they lose the passion. Because they get unbelief in their hearts. There's no longer faith. There's no longer fresh faith. And many have to repent for no longer having fresh faith. Or having faith and they've allowed unbelief to come in the moment unbelief comes in religion comes in when religion comes in a hardening of the heart comes in unbelief rebellion those are the things that come in we have people that rebelled uh, or when we say close to us not a lot but but some and if they were birthed they always come back because a son or a daughter cannot run away from their father. Or they can run away, but they can never say, I'm not a son. They can never say, I'm not a, I'm not a daughter. So you see them always coming back as the prodigal son. And that is good. God can do a lot of things, but time is lost. Because time is lost. It's like, what do you do? You were 20 when you were by us. Or 24 when you were by us. Now you are 40. And you wonder why you don't have what we have. Can God work with someone who's 40? Absolutely. It's just that you, that you could have started at 20 when you were birthed. What, is this, what am I saying? When you are birthed or when you find a ministry that you feel God is there. And listen to me. God is not where you are comfortable. God is where He calls you. He is where He has placed you. And where He has called you, it will usually offend you. 
It will take you through troubles. It will take, it will irritate you. But if God is there, stay there. Because it is there that you will be sent. It is there that you will receive establishing, that you receive the blessing in whichever capacity that you are. It is there that the hand of the Lord is upon you. It is there that God has chosen and placed you. And it is there we will send you out to be used. It is there where the salvation and deliverance of your family is. It is a place called there. He said, Elisha, go to Elijah, go to a place where I will feed you, a place where the ravens will feed you, a place called there. And there I will feed you, and the ravens will feed you, and the brook will supply you water. But it is a place called there. So the question is, where is there where God has called you? Because many people don't follow the finger of God. And they run to and fro. And it is like a tree that is supplanted and planted. And, so, and their fruit can never be in season. Their leaf can never be fruitful, can never be green. They can never be fresh. And they cannot supply healing to the nations. It is only a tree that is planted by the rivers, bearing fruits that can become healing to the nations. Timothy, I want to be birthed. So I want to embrace my hiding season. Have your seats, have your seats. So where we look, 246, let me read there. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why, has you dealt with, uh, why have you dealt with us like this? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? It is in Nazareth where you must be about your father's business. Not your own business. A lot of people want their own vision. That vision never comes to pass. I do not care what. When you're in the kingdom, the laws change. Principles change. Order changes. Isaac had to die to his own vision. To fulfill the vision of his father. At the moment to fulfill the vision of his father, he could become the promised son. And have multiplication and fruitfulness. So Jesus is saying, at the season of Nazareth, I am about my father's business. I'm about the one who gave birth to me. I'm doing what God has given him. I'm fulfilling the vision of the house. I'm fulfilling the DNA of the house. Verse 50, and they understood not the saying, they were stupid, which the saying which he spoke unto them. Seriously, this is our people that are spiritually blinded. You can speak spiritual things and it's like it's just going in ear, out the other. They look at you like, it's like they become retarded. That's the only way I can explain it. When people have a veil over them, it's like, they, it's like anything else, they are fine. The moment you mention a spiritual thing, it's like they become, they become dull. It's like when I ask scriptures. <laughs> so they understood not the saying which he spoke unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth. So within Nazareth and was subject unto them. Hold on. He was subject unto his parents. Where? At Nazareth. In Nazareth, you're subject unto your spiritual parents. 
It is a place of hiding. It is a place of maturing. It is a place of raising up. It is a place of spiritual maturing. It is a place where you are 12 years old. Jesus was 12 around this time. Are you guys with me? He was speaking wisdom to the teachers of the law and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the doctors and the professors of the day. He was speaking to them with such authority that they said, who is this one? That he speaks, and the Bible says he grew with all wisdom and stature. So let's go on. He say with me, subjects unto them. The word subject means subordinate, to obey, to be under obedience. And I had to dish out some rebukes this week because there were people that were not under subject. And what happens is you can see somebody being taken by the enemy. And unless a father or a mother grabs and say, listen, you're going the wrong way. But you see what is happening, the sheep are rebellious. I'm not saying you now, everyone, just your neighbor. So relax. Just say to the one next to you, he's, not, he's speaking to you. Okay. So, subject unto them. The word subject means to be put under, to subdue, to make a subject of. I won't get into even what that means, but it is huputaso, which means to be placed in order, under an orderly fashion, to subjugate and to be placed under submission. It's the only way you can move to the next phase. People don't get to the next phase unless they embrace Nazareth. It is Nazareth that pushes them into the next season of their life, which I'll explain to you is now. Are you guys with me? And the Spirit of the Lord will usually show who is in subject, who is submitted. When I'm not submitted, what, is, what it means? I am in disobedience. I'm in rebellion. Rebellion is, is the sin of witchcraft. It means I open up the doors of witchcraft upon my life. It means I get attacked by evil spirits. I get tormented by evil spirits because I have opened up a door of witchcraft simply because of rebellion. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as idolatry. So he's saying if you're stubborn, it is like you're serving in another God, which is self. When you're in rebellion, it is like witchcraft. Are you guys with me? It is the similar as a wife to her husband. For all those liberals out there. Feminists. At least we're in South Africa. A woman is most powerful when she's under the cover of her husband. The devil tries to come and lie and say, you can do without. No, you cannot. God has designed. I'm not speaking of abuse. I'm saying to be in an order, to be placed in order. It is God's design. When that order is broken, you see, isn't it amazing that the Bible says even an unbeliever, if you're married to an unbeliever, be in submission to him. It says it. But believers don't even want to submit to their spouses that are believers. The Bible says even if you're married to an unbeliever, submit to him. And if he leaves, let him go. When people marry the wrong person, it is the end of their destiny. 
That is why it is important to know your calling and your destiny before you get married. For those of you that find it out afterwards, it is okay. They, usually by God's sovereign will, He will allow, and by man's free choice, both will accept Christ and they'll follow the calling. But you marry the wrong person. That is why we are so strict and serious when it, you know, because people just want to marry and they are running after love, but love blinds and love is blind. And the moment you marry, you are yoked. It's finished. It really is. If that person is an unbeliever, the devil has every right to come every day into your marriage. You have just literally opened up the gates of hell. You cannot guarantee if somebody will get saved or not. If we have ever seen somebody suffer is when they married to an unbeliever. So for young people, don't marry until you know the call of God in your life and until that one is compatible to them. So it says this word subject is like a wife to a husband. God's design is for a wife to be submitted to a husband. Only meaning as God is the husband's covering, the husband is the wife's covering. It is his order. A lot of wives rebel. They are spiritual, super spiritual. They rebel. They are not under the covering that God has ordained them to be. And they wonder why the blessing is not there. Why things are not moving in their lives. Your wife is supposed to be a helper. It's like the voice of the Holy Spirit. When Eve was given to Adam, Eve was Adam's helper. Who is the Holy Spirit? He is our helper, our comforter. So your wife is like the Holy Spirit to you if you marry the right wife. If you marry the wrong wife, it can be like an evil spirit to you. I'm serious. If you marry the right husband, it can be like Christ to you. If you marry the wrong husband, it will be like the Antichrist to you. You will have hell on earth. Are you guys with me? And so the church in submission to Christ. And so he's saying that Jesus was in submission to his parents. Jesus was in subject unto them during the Nazareth phase. Listen, the Nazareth phase can be many years. It can be three years, five years, 10 years, 15 years, depending on obedience, disobedience, but also election and grace and purpose and a lot of things, the timing of the Lord. It's just that people don't embrace a Nazareth phase in their lives. They don't embrace the Nazareth season in their lives. Because they don't embrace the Nazareth season, they don't understand they are hiding and they try to reveal themselves when the revealing of God is not upon them. The Bible says after was it after 40 years? I might be wrong. Or 30 years with, um, after 30 years with John in the wilderness, the day of his manifestation came after 30 years. Are you guys with me? He was 30 years hidden in the wilderness for an assignment. He knew when to come out or when to go into hiding. He knew when to appear. Even Jesus knew when His timing was. He would do a miracle and say, go and tell no one. For this, it's not time yet for the Son of Man to be glorified. My hour has not come yet, He says. For the meaning, go in silence. Don't go say who I am. My hour has not come yet. Christians want the hour to come now. The hour to come now. And God is saying, your hour has not come yet. For there will be a time and a season of revealing, of glorification, of manifestation, of appearing for each one. Are you guys with me? You will not get these teachings in a normal church. They don't know this. These are prophetic teachings. These are prophetic secrets. Now we get to the next phase. So with the Galilee. So because Jesus embraced Nazareth, 
He enters into Galilee. You gotta go Luke 4, verse 14. Look what happened at Galilee. In Nazareth, there was no miracles, nothing. He had to submit. He was the Son of God, yet he had to be subject unto his parents. Are you guys with me? Does it say unto our brothers? No. Unto parents. Know who is my parent in the Lord. If I have birthed encounter, whether you have birthed from here or you are sent to here, this is your spiritual home. A lot of people want to run this when they get into trouble. Be released. You know, a lot of people, so we, may, we are soft as pastors and it is okay. But God moves you geographically. That is fine. Sometimes circumstances will move you because you have to move to another region, country, or in so on. But then people say, uh, I don't fit in this church. I want to go look for, already is eliminate, you eliminated from what God is doing. God never asked whether we fit in somewhere or not. He placed Jesus with a house. He couldn't choose which was his parents, not even the son of God. Could choose his parents, nor the place where he was born. He had to be subject and submitted. And through that, when a death came and a birthing came and Nazareth season came, and he went through Nazareth and then he got into the third phase called Galilee. Luke 4 verse 14 says, And Jesus returned in the power, say so within the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. The moment you endear your Nazareth, he will shift you into a season of your Galilee. Once you touch your Galilee, you will move in the power of the Spirit. Your name will go before you. Regions will hear about you. You will become a gift instead of just seeking a gift. Wherever you go, the Spirit will be upon you and miracles will begin to be performed. Timothy, submit to Nazareth so that Galilee can come. Do you understand what I'm saying, church? Have you, have you seen? Do you understand what I'm saying? In the back, how many can feel the anointing? If God is doing something, please, we'll prophesy and we'll minister just now. I need to get this message that I was supposed to get it through this morning. In the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and his fame went throughout all the region around about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. So they've been glorified. This is where you will know when you've stepped into your Galilee. And if you have not yet, stay in your Nazareth. If you're not even in your Nazareth, get into your Bethlehem that you can be given birth, that you can be born. That you can come out of the womb of a genuine man of God. I have seen people trying to come out of the womb that is not a genuine man of God. Trust me, there's nothing. When somebody lays hands on you that is not of God, what are you going to get? Not God. When somebody lays hands on you who is of God, you're going to get God. We have seen business people trying to lay hands on people because they want to be ministers. They think they are ministers, these business people. And they build their churches by business principles only. And when they do it by business principles only, then all of a sudden they have this son and they have that son and they have this son. They can't give anything to them because they never had anything to give. And what do they end up doing? They end up destroying people's lives. They end up destroying their lives. Because people will serve them all their years and live empty. I can tell you now, at least if you serve you, if you don't go through the process, if you leave, at least you're going to leave with something. 
you might not live with a whole thing because you lived before your, but you're going to live with something and you will find it out the moment you put your feet into another church. You'll realize, oh Lord Jesus, I thank God for encounter. I actually got substance. Trust me. I don't care if it is a mega church you are going to. I don't care whatever is happening. You will realize all of a sudden, God was where I used to be. God was there. When you are in it, you don't know. When you are here, even from the beginning, you don't know what is really going on out there. Only once you step out, then you realize what you once had. Let's go to Matthew 11 verse 20. We're still by Galilee. I need to hurry up. I preach very slow, but I'm trying to get something through to you. Then began he upbraided the cities where in most, where in most of his mighty works, so with him mighty works were done because they repented not. So at Galilee, his mighty works was done, not in Nazareth. So in Galilee, and then I can go through the next few verses, which I'm not going to go to, and speaks of mighty works, mighty works in Chorazin, mighty works in Bethsaida, mighty works in, 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 in Capernaum, mighty works in all these different cities. And mighty works, signs and wonders were done. Go with me to Matthew 4 verse 12. Now when, are we still at Galilee? Now when Jesus heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast, in the borders of Zabulon and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Esaias the prophet, Isaiah the prophet, saying, the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people which sat in darkness, say with me, in darkness, saw a great light. Why did they see a great light? Because Jesus was in His Galilee. The moment you are in your Galilee, you become a great light to people who are in darkness. And to them which sat in the region and in the shadow of death, light is sprung up upon them. You can only carry deliverance if you have gone through your Nazareth and you're now in your Galilee and the power of the Spirit rests upon you. You lay your hands on the sick and they are healed. You lay your hands on the possessed and they are delivered. You prophesy to people and they hear the word of the Lord. You can set people free and send them because you carry the power of the Spirit. Are you guys with me? We go to Durban. Healings exploded in Durban. Those who were there would see it in Belito. We move from there to Cape Town. You can have your seats. We get to Cape Town. The first night was good. The second night, uh, the, the, the second night, the glory came in. People, when I say hundreds thronged the stage and just got healed. It popped like this, just healing, 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 healing. But then I thought, my God, is this familiarity or not? Because Jesus was not known in his own hometown. And we need to be careful in Centurion that people don't travel from far to come and receive God here, but those who are close here cannot even receive Him. Don't fall into that trap. So you become a light to people in darkness. Let's get to the fourth phase of Jesus' life. The last one, I'll close here. So with Jerusalem. Luke 9 verse 51. Let's go to Luke 9 verse 51. So you go through Bethlehem, you're being born. Nazareth, you're being hidden. Galilee, you're being revealed. The power of the Spirit is upon you. You're moving in miracles. But the thing is, once that is happening, God is looking for another phase and He's taking you into another phase. You thought this phase has happened. No, only Nazareth happened upon your life. 
But Jerusalem is the face of death. Crucifixion. It is the place where Christ was crucified. It is the place of His ultimate assignment. It is the place where He had to lay down everything that He had. It is the place of death. Luke 9, 51, And it came to pass, when the time was come, that He should be received up. So that when the time had come, everything works in timing. Don't miss the timing of God for your life. God can redeem time, but if you're 90 years old, I mean, He can only do so much. So, people think, you know, there's redemption of time always. No, we are still in a natural world. At best, we are hoping for 120, but few live there, live to that point. But I believe it is a place that we should be able to attain, at the very least. Um, but uh, due to a lot of circumstances, of, or things that is happening. Obviously, people don't get there. But I believe it is a realm of faith. I believe that there's a place where you can see Jesus. The Bible says that Moses saw the glory of the Lord and he lived to 120 years old. And he had the strength of a young man and his eyes was not dim. He was strong to such a degree that the Lord told him, you must go and die because if I don't tell you to die, you won't die. So there's a place where you're received up. Let's go Luke 19, 28. Luke 19, 28. I'll close with this. Once you have gone through the phases, you get to the fourth phase, which is the phase of death. But when you hit the phase of death, it says, And when he had thus spoken, he went before them, ascending, say with me, ascending, up to Jerusalem. Ascending, meaning this is the phase of your ascension. A lot of people wonder why they are not lifted, but they have not gone through the phases of ministry. Bethlehem, Nazareth, Galilee, until they reach Jerusalem. Jerusalem, even in Galilee, you'll move the power of the Spirit, but it does not mean you went through death yet. It means you went through testing. Because as Jesus came out of Nazareth, before He hit Galilee, what happened? He went through a wilderness. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And He came out of the wilderness with the power of the Holy Spirit upon Him. And He walked into Galilee. So when somebody comes out of their Nazareth season, they go through tests. First test was hiding, hidden away, secret place, obscurity. Nobody is talking about you. You learn the words, you learn to pray, you learn to serve, you're subject unto your parents, you're subject unto those who are authority over you. You wait until the timing of the Lord comes in. Then the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you when you hit maturity. At the age of 30, Jesus went from there. And he entered and he was taken into a wilderness season. And as he went 40 days of testing, which means temptation and testing. And he came out of that. The power of the Spirit was upon him. But the power of the Spirit could only come on him once he was matured. Say with him, matured. So what brings the maturing? It is Nazareth, not Galilee. Galilee will mess you up if you have not been matured by Nazareth. Nazareth takes you, matures you, forms you. The Bible says a child is subject unto his teachers until the time has been fulfilled and the Father has released them. Galatians 4 verse 1, go with me there. Galatians 4 verse 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, a child is a Nazareth, not a son. A son is in Galilee. I'm going to say it again. A child is a Nazareth because a child needs to be formed, needs to be shaped. A child doesn't tell you when they are a son. You know when they are a son. Time tells it. Some people can be a child and 25 years old. Are you guys with me? 
Some people can be a child and 45 years old. They live with their parents, useless, couch potato. No marriage, no job, no responsibility, useless. In the hands of society, useless in the hands of God. Let's be honest. What are they? They are a child. In fact, they are an embarrassment. They are a parent's embarrassment. The parent can't boast about them. The parent can't be proud about them. Because that child never took responsibility. So it is in the Spirit. There are seasons, there are phases. We go into Nazareth, we are subject. Isn't it amazing that we are subject unto our unsaved, Gentile, secular, unbelieving bosses. But we fail to be subject unto the leaders that God has appointed upon us in the kingdom of God. And then we wonder, why am I not blessed? Why in this? But yet we serve our unsaved boss that is drinking, beating his wife, doing whatever, taking all your money, all your time and energy, giving you a little bit back. How oh, we give our lives to them. We pay our tax. But we even refuse to give God what is due to Him. So we pay our tax to, Jerus to, to, to Caesar. But we don't pay to God what is His. And we wonder why is God not moving? Why is God blessing not upon our lives? I just gave you two easy principles that will cause you to become blessed. What is it? Give. Number two, go through the phases. Go from a child, from a baby being born to a child going through Nazareth, going through the wilderness to a son, having the power of the Spirit upon your life. Being able to be used in miracles. Listen to me. Miracles doesn't just come to anyone. It comes to those who went through Nazareth and has been tested. They hit the season of Galilee and the Spirit of the Lord is upon them. But then there's going to be a season of death where the Lord wants to take you up and lift you and promote you. It is Jerusalem. Everyone will go to Jerusalem. But you can never go to Jerusalem and be lifted, promoted and ascended unless you have been Bethlehem, Nazareth, Galilee. Are you guys with me? Stand to your feet wherever you are. Stand to your feet. I want to minister, I want to prophesy, but before I prophesy, I want us to do the offering for the sake of time. I'm not going to do an offering message. You can just stand to your feet. I'm not going to do an offering message. Nothing. Say with me an open heaven. Say it again. Say an open heaven. When are we getting these new speakers that we bought? This is the things that is making it so bad sound. Say with me an open heaven. How do I become an open heaven? By giving. Those online, how do I become an open heaven? By giving. Let me for the sake of, uh, just again, read Matthew 3 verse 8. Matthew 3 verse 8. It says, bring, no, not Matthew, sorry, Malachi 3 verse 8. Malachi 3 verse 8. <clears throat> Malachi 3 verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed you? In tithes, say with me, in tithes and offerings. Next verse. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all. Say with me, bring all. So that means I don't go and give it out to somebody on the street that's needing it. The tithe is holy. The tithe belongs to God. A lot of people are saying to the orphan, to this, no, 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 the tithe belongs to God. Then there are other things that will go to that, but the tithe is holy. If the root is holy, the whole branch is holy. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And test me now in this. Test me, says the Lord, that if you bring me tithes and offerings, that I will not open you the window of heaven that I'll not cause you 
to pour out, not give you a blessing, but cause you to be the blessing and to become a blessing to others. Rivers to flow out of your belly, to pour you out, meaning you become the gift when you go into people's midst. God takes you and He pours you out to others. Out of a, pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough, so the room enough to receive it. Meaning wherever you go, you will be too large, too big. When God begins to pour you out, you will not be looking for some, but you will be supplying others with a blessing. You'll be supplying others with an income. A lot of people are looking just to be provided for. How about you employ people? and you provide an income, you provide a salary. He makes you the blessing. He makes you an open heaven for others that they can experience God around you. Are you guys with me? Raise your hands to the Lord wherever you are. Say with you, say, Holy Spirit, make me a blessing, an open heaven, room enough, not room enough, to receive me. So if you're not room enough to receive me, pour me out. I receive becoming a blessing of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Wherever you are right now, I want you to get your offering ready. If you give by phone, I want you to raise your phone. If you use Venmo, uh, Zappa, Snapscan, those online, if you use the international giving, stretch out your hands towards the screens. Those in the building, if you're using your phone, raise your phone. If you're using an envelope, you'll see by your chairs is an envelope of sewing. Lift up the envelope. Uh, if you're ready to give or lift up just the cash or whatever you want to give right now, lift up your credit card and you can make way with credit card in the back if you want to give. Then we're going to begin to minister and prophesy to some that is here uh, quickly as the Spirit of the Lord leads. But if you're ready to give right now into this word, into this revelation, Father, I pray for each one here that is lifting up, those online that is giving, may the blessing of, may they become the blessing of God. Make us an open heaven, I pray. Open up the windows of heaven. Where we have not tithed, where we have not given, I pray that we repent right and all. That we know that this is why the blessing has been hindered. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. You can go ahead and give. If you're ready to come and give in front, you can come to the front. You can give via phone or you can go to the back with credit cards. Those online, you can give. Thank you so much. Falling down the ocean to sing the song of ages to the land. If you've gone before us, and if you will believe, sing the song of ages to the land. Your name. Here, 
I'd encounter, we are also taking up, which is the Vision Fund, to those uh, online that are ready to give to those in the building. I want to encourage you, give as much as you can. The project is coming. It can be a matter of one month or three months. It is coming. Uh, and you will be really blessed to see what the Lord is doing. But we cannot do it without your giving. We cannot do it without the giving of those online. Um, you know, uh, we are doing something that is an anomaly at our age of ministry. Only seven years. And um, with no support from any church, never a support from any ministry, even when we planted the church. There was never no one who came and supported and said, we will do this. It was purely the hand of God. That is it. So if you want to give into this vision, this vision of God, and many people wonder what is happening with their money, well, you know, you will see in a, in a month or, 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 or two or so. And uh, I always say in seven years, we have already just put down close to 18 million on something uh, that you will see what it is for. Um, there's some other millions that we are starting with, but this is also from our international ministry, so not just uh, the local church here. Uh, we need the local church to pick up strong on that behalf, and we cannot do it without our international givers. And, uh, you know, we have attained other properties. We've sent our churches. We have planted churches uh, in seven years. And many of you are giving, when we plant churches, we sow big into these churches. When we plant Cape Town, we sow big there. When we plant Durban, we are busy sowing big there. We are giving big seeds there. Uh, there's, a, there's an amount that the Lord put on my heart. I haven't even asked people here, or I will, I'm supposed to say I want people to give this amount. Maybe I will because it's quite a heavy amount on us. But we sow that and we bless that to them. And know when you give into the vision fund, it helps with all these things. Before we know it, encounter will be planted all over this nation. It already has footprints all over. So that when people come in, even fly in internationally. They can come, they can receive the prophetic, they can receive deliverance, they can receive any gifting that is coming out of encounter. And we're building a place of the five faults. Uh, again, where we plant churches, not trying, we do it and we establish it, we do it properly. So if you want to, and then obviously all the monies that is taken up in this place and uh, online is going towards the main project that we're with. So if you're ready to give right now, you can give into the vision fund. Don't just give it, don't just throw into the little thing, you can throw into the little basket, but also give via EFT online, big amounts, those online. We appreciate your giving, those of you that can, especially with foreign currency. Uh, everything comes to this project. We want to thank you. You can go ahead. Thank you so much. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest.
Just raise your hands to the Lord where you're sitting. Raise your hands. I want the Holy Spirit to come and speak. there's a, there's a young man there with a white shirt. Come here for me, yes. Are you married, not married? Come stand here. The Lord said to me, tell him, I am bringing deliverance to him and his house. For I have taken his heart, I've captured his heart. And I'm going to begin to run. But there was one, there's a thing that is tormenting you, that is going to be free. And you're going to feel it lift from you this night. For the Lord is saying, I will break this yoke of thoughts that has come in and whispered and saying things because there's a call of God upon your life. There's a hunger upon your life, says the Spirit of God. There's a hunger upon your life. There's a thirst upon your life. See how I will clothe you with my mantle tonight, says the Spirit of the Lord. And I will lift you up. I will bless you financially because the enemy is trying to shut a lot of doors and saying you're not worth it. You're not worth it there. You're not worth it here. But I'm opening up an area when it comes to finances, when it comes to business, so that I can establish you. And then I will raise you up, says the Spirit of God. Because I will run with you, son, in many years to come from now. And we will run fast, says the Spirit of the Lord. For I will put fire upon you, a fire upon you, and there is a thing that is coming with anxiety, depression type anxiety, sleepless nights or coming at night, the terror of nights, whispering to you thoughts that is not of me, says the Lord. This night I am removing this, but you will encounter my fire, my mantle come upon you. And the Lord is saying, I will cause you to run for do not look to the left, do not look to the right. I will touch family. I will touch parents. I will touch parents that the enemy has tried to remove, that the enemy has tried to take to the left and take to the right. And the Lord is saying, I will come with my power. I will touch them. I will lift up. I will put my spirit upon them. And I will shake them where the enemy wanted to come in with a generational curse of poverty upon this family to say that you will have nothing take property everything from the family the lord is saying i bring a restoration for if you pick up my armor today and you begin to run see how i will clothe you and i will restore back what the enemy has stolen from generations before and i'll clothe you with my fire in jesus mighty name fill him right now Fill him right bring him up, bring him up, bring him up.
glory of God to weigh upon you. Let the Davod glory rest on you. For the Lord is saying, even tonight as you leave, there will be visions that I'll give you, dreams that I'll give you, says the Spirit of the Lord. For the Lord is saying, I am entering your mind and I'm setting you free from my mind control thing that is trying to come in and bring torment. You will have a clean, clear mind from this night in Jesus' mighty name. And you will hear my voice with clarity, says the Spirit of God. Come on, give him a praise offering. There's a lady there with the whites. Are you guys married or not? Or are you alone? Your daughter, can you come? Just you come here for me. He will sense an authority in this place. For the Lord is saying, I'm uprooting things out of your life. And I'm bringing peace to pains, to hurts that has happened. For the Spirit of the Lord is mightily upon you. And I'm going to use you. There's a great future, says the Lord. There's a great future. But the enemy wants to come for your body and hit your body with sickness or with pain that is going to be removed. For the Lord is saying, I will use you for my glory, daughter, says the Spirit of God. I see in the area of relationships, things is going to be cleaned up and I will speak concisely, I will speak Clear, says the Lord. For I have begun a work in the family. I have begun a great work in the family. And the Lord is saying, in the family, the Spirit of God is coming. For I have sought after you. Daughter of Zion, I've sought after you. I have chased you. And now there will be an encounter with my face, says the Spirit of the Lord. For I've sent an angel with you, and even tonight an angel is going with you. And the Lord is saying, I've placed my angels around you. I see something happening or opening up when it comes to a job or a work. I'm looking at somebody that is going to travel or do or move. Like an opportunity is coming. When this come, do not fear. For the Lord is saying, I am with you. And then there will be a promotion that is coming, says this with the Lord. For I will put my wisdom in your mouth. And I'll cause you to be very calculated, analytical with certain things. I'll cause my spirit to be upon that. And there will be a gift in that area. For the Lord is saying, I'll cause you to bring freedom to many. As I will set you free from the pain of yesterday, from the pain of childhood. And the little bit of fear and anxiety that has sometimes come because not knowing what direction to go. The Lord is saying, I will bring clarity and clearness. I rebuke anxiety. I rebuke the voices that wants to hold you back. For the Lord is saying, do not turn to the left nor turn to the right. For there is an anointing when it comes to children when it comes even to working with children going forward. For I will give you sweet words in your mouth to speak. Sweet words to speak. And these sweet words that you will speak, even where the enemy wants to come at your womb area or stomach area, there shall be no hindrance and no blockage. For the Lord is saying, I will cause an encounter to come upon you. From this night when I lay hands on you, says the Spirit of the Lord. You will go home with visions. You will go home knowing my presence is with you. Knowing the anointing of the Holy Spirit is with you. Fill it in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, touch her life right now. Rest upon her, come upon her. I pray that you'll clothe her right now with your fire. Clothe her with the Holy Spirit. 
for this move that I'm seeing that is going to take place. Let it be in the right time, in the right decision. And where the enemy wants to bring a wrong thing to come in, I pray that it will be removed and options will be taken. In Jesus' name. You're right behind you is someone. Right behind you, right behind you. Can you come here for me? Yes, you, 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 yeah, yeah. Stand, stand up, yeah. Come stand here. Come stand here. As you're standing here, just to stand here. Nasko vrige kere de na mambro do shake it. Is this, are everyone here together? All four? Together? Okay. I'm looking at an illness. Something that the Lord wants to heal. That has been a hurt and a struggle. Just stand. This is the, this is the couple. It's just stand up. For me. Is this your? What is that? Is couple here? How are you guys related? Your mom, mother-in-law, wife. So that's your mom. Okay, that's your sister. All stand up for me. That's fine. I'm looking at a illness in the body that I need to pray for. I see a couple of things, almost like high blood sugar, high blood pressure or blood sugar. But there's another thing that it wants to cause. I need to pray for you. Come, come stand here. Look me in the eyes, look me in the eyes. This is gonna, you're gonna be set free tonight from not only this illness. Now this wants to cause some other things. I saw blood sugar or something like that. Want to hit, come to kidneys or uh, liver, hey? Your daughter, come, 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 come.
What's wrong with you? family sitting there, I saw the angel of healing there. A command, I know you will be healed tonight. Do you believe Jesus can heal you? I know He will. You're going to be set free from pain of betrayal, the pain of loss, the pain of betrayal, and the blood sugar that wants to cause something. I command that it will go down tonight in Jesus' mighty name. And the Spirit is going to leave you. For the Lord is saying, light will come back to you. Joy will come back to you. Joy will come back to you. What church are you at? Are you here or have you, are you just visiting here? You just moved here from where? Here in Marisburg. Okay, well. Were you there in the church? Were you guys there in the church? Okay. The whole family moved here? Can your husband come for me as well? Come stand next to her. Mm. I'll just pack up the chairs. Take a bit, take a step forward for me. You can take a step forward for me, yeah. I know I'm not in the best place, but it is okay. There's a great call of God in your life. Great call of God in your life. The Lord is going to use this family here. Um, the Lord is going to use you. I pray that tonight there'll be an establishing even in this ministry. That if this is where the Lord wants you to be, that you'll be established and you'll be raised up. Because there is a great call of God. There's even a prophet that is locked up in you. There's a prophetic voice in you that has to come out, has to be nurtured. It has to be nurtured, it has to come out. This has been prophesied may, very long ago as well. And there'll be deliverance that is coming to this house, deliverance coming to this marriage. For the Lord is saying, do not fear what the enemy has decided or de de desired to bring asunder. I will not divide, I will restore, I will bring together, says the Spirit of God. For the Lord is saying, I shall open up one business after another, after another. I shall put you in front of men of great favor. I shall put you in front of men of great influence. I will cause your mouth to be opened. I will cause your mouth to speak. And, I shall, and there will be favor and finances coming to you. For the Lord is saying, you shall see from this moment on forward how a property will open and how the blessing of God will come to you. Not one in your house shall be lost, not one in your house shall be taken. I'm looking at children. Do you have children yet or not? Because is this, the con is this stopping children? How long have you been married? Third year. Is this stopping children? I'm looking and I'm seeing two young kids in front of me in the Spirit that the Lord is going to do. I command healing to come to you in Jesus' mighty name. To both of you, healing to come in Jesus' mighty name. The enemy has desired to take you even the past with a car accident. But I will not allow or permit this to happen, says the Spirit of God. This assignment is to remove the call of God from your life and to try to remove your influence that the Spirit of the Lord is going to put upon you to be able to carry His kingdom into regions. I cancel death over your life that has come from religions and cultures before try to come in and stop even the attack from family even the words from family the isolation from family for the Lord is saying I'm bringing healing this night and you will know my presence like never before <sighs> Jesus. 
Zanuska Ale. Now I command healing to come to you. In Jesus' mighty name, I rebuke this kidney situation. I command you to be fruitful. I command you to multiply. I command you to bring forth the will of God. Where I see a daughter, it's almost like I'm looking, I don't know if I'm looking at two daughters, but the Lord is saying, I shall bring an extension of this family where the enemy has tried to stop. You will have life and healing. I command your kidneys to come into alignment, every hormone to come into alignment, every spirit that has allowed this to happen to be removed from this family. In Jesus' name, be healed. Be healed, be healed, be healed. Raska vrede unoskete. Lebroska de lebena maskete. I rebuke this blood sugar. I command the angel of the Lord to be in this house. For the Lord is saying, I will deliver you, daughter, for many prayers that you have prayed. And I shall bring a pillar, I shall bring a light and joy back to you. Where the enemy has tried to rob it. In Jesus' name. I command healing to come from blood. Now I prophesied of you before or not? You look familiar, that's why I'm just asking. Okay, can't remember what I said. Um, I first pointed and I said a healing that needs to come. For there is a healing that is going to come. The Lord is saying, do not find it strange that you are in this house tonight. Like the spirit of abandonment was on you from a young age. I command this hole to be broken from you in Jesus name. The pain of rejection, the pain of loneliness is going to be broken. For I'm looking at a lot of money that has to be released to you, that has been withheld from you. For the Lord is saying, you have cried out for deliverance, you have cried out for freedom. I will open up your heart, even to family. I will open up your heart to others around you. For I have called you, son, I have called you. As a minister, I have called you to evangelize, I've called you to bring deliverance, I've called you to be a pastor, to love people, I have called you to be pastoral, to love people, I have called you as a mantle uh, that will be upon you, says the Spirit of God. For the Lord is saying, with the enemy has tried to come with death, not once, not twice, like three times or four times, where death tried to come to you. And I'm praying right now specifically with the upper chest area, almost like the heart. It shall not come in. Fear that wants to grip when it comes to health, when it comes to finances. I loose you from this thought of fear right now. And the Lord is saying where the enemy wanted to come in as an orphan spirit when you were young, this thing is broken by the Father's love tonight in Jesus' mighty name. And I command heavens inside of you to be opened up. For Amosa Avrechekes Ketelebaya, there is a threat that wants to steal a lot of things from you. There is a threat that wants to take a lot of things from you. This night, by the authority of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke and I cut off every assignment of your life, every threat, everything spoken of your life. For the Lord is saying, I will set you free and I'll set your seed free. The enemy has tried to come into the house 
and try to distract and try to push away and try to hurt. For the enemy has tried to come in and bring a darkness and to capture and to entrap people. But when my light has come and when you begin to pray, know that you have the authority. For as you open up your mouth, you'll see freedom beginning to come to your house. And I will put a mantle upon you, says the Spirit of the Lord. And I'll cause you to run. I will cause you to be established. And then I'll cause you to run. For I shall move you and I shall change one or two things from one place to another says the Spirit of the Lord and there will be peace that will come upon you for there is a closure of something financially that is trying to bring a threat the Lord is saying I'm going to bring peace my hand is in this situation do not fear
very strong. Just stretch out your hands. that came I saw a disappointment a loss I saw how the Lord is saying I have called you and you wanted to run with passion and you wanted to run with fire and then a disappointment came or there was a tripping up but I've put a fire in your belly. Do not let it be lukewarm, says the Spirit of God. I am going to bring my hand of healing to family. I'm going to bring my hand of healing to your family. I'm looking at the sun very specifically that the hand of the Lord is upon. For it is like He will draw very close to you, says the Lord. He will draw very close to you. I'm seeing, I'm seeing I'm not sure if you work somewhere, but there's something that is, has to come. It's like a contract or a business or something that you are, because in the family, the Lord has put a business anointing or something on the family that should have happened with generations before. And you're going to step into it. I'm going to touch your family. I see we need to pray for parents very specifically and the Lord is saying I'll put my hand upon you because I'm pulling you closer to me son says the Lord a fresh passion I will cause my first love to be renewed in you you have run but where you were you were passionate but it was not of my spirit, says the Lord. And I will put you in a new place. Because from a young age, I have called you and I've set you apart from a young age. Very young age. I'm looking like at five, seven. Young, young, young age. I have come to you like I've come to Samuel. And I've called you from a very young age. Do not underestimate for I want to begin to pull out leadership, ability and capabilities in you, says the Spirit of God. For right now, even as my servant prays for you, there'll be a deposit of a gift. There'll be an activation of a gift. But I remove every erosion from the family. Everything that is concerning of the family, and I'm making confusion and I'm bringing for it'll be like a fresh wind that is going to blow. Do not lay your heart down. Do not be discouraged. Do not lose heart, says the Spirit of the Lord. For a fresh wind is beginning to blow. And you will sense my glory. You will know my glory. I will enter into your room and I will visit you says the Spirit of God and I will renew the passion and the fire to begin to run again and you will know how things will begin to fall in line and inheritance is coming your way says the Spirit of God I will entrust you with an inheritance I see land I see property that is coming and the Lord is saying but do not wait for that for I will cause you to begin to run with a passion and a fire for your voice you will speak with leadership you will speak 
with an unction under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. For as you healed your life to me, and as you give yourself to me, we will begin to run, says the Spirit of God. season upon your life a new season upon your life I speak the Word of God into your family Holy Spirit touch his life fill his life fill his life fill him let rivers of living water flow out of his belly in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, let's give him a praise offering, church. raise your hands one more time. The glory of God is here. We'll be finished just now. I need to, quickly before we end, I need to pray for anyone that right now you have a serious illness. It is a serious illness upon your body serious illness almost terminal or it can become terminal if that is you just raise your hands for me if you say you need healing in this area come for me to the front wherever you are just come just come that's what the Lord pointed me to you anyway I wanted to minister to you so come and stand here so he is here. your healing is here. to heal you. I see this threat of cancer. I don't want any unbelief.
Let sickness can stay any longer Your perfect love is casting a fear You are the God You are the God Thank you for your presence. I thank you for the anointing. There's so many that I could have so prophesied over. But I pray that the word of the Lord will reach them, will come to them, will minister to them even through the message. And that they tap into the prophetic mantle. I pray for faith to be increased in this house. Faith to be increased here in the church. Those who have been here already from the beginning will not lose faith or lose heart. But I pray for a fresh new season, a brand new season. Seven years going into eight years, a brand new season. That there will be a season of multiplication and fruitfulness. I pray those who are here in the midst, who are here established in this house, will be delivered, set free. Run with a vision, with the fire of the Holy Spirit.
with the power of God in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, let's give a praise offering one more time. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next, next week Sunday. If you would like to give into this ministry, we have made giving your tithes, seed, or offering as simple and effortless as possible. You can simply log on to EncounterChurch.co.za or LeonDupria.com and click on the Give button. Here we show you the different ways to give. It's so easy. You will find giving options for local or international giving. PayFast is a fast and secure way for South Africans to give. You can give once off or make a recurring donation. Here you will find the Zapper and SnapScan QR codes as a simple and effortless way to scan and give into the ministry. If you prefer to make an electronic transfer, the banking details of our various campuses and the Visionary Fund are also readily available. For giving internationally, Cash App is one of our fast and simple giving platforms. PayPal is another method for quick and easy giving internationally. You can use your PayPal account or you can give straight from your credit card. DonorBox is also available, which accepts a variety of international giving methods. For those who would like to take hands with us and become a part of the incredible work that God is doing, become a friend and partner of Encounter and Leon Dupria. We have many partnership tiers available to suit your preference. Our friends and partners receive exclusive materials from Leon Dupria, as well as private live streams and exclusive events. Thank you for being part of what God is doing.